Good morning, everybody. How are we doing today? Happy Tuesday. And we're getting to the end. And you know we're getting to the very end because we're talking about kickers. That's right. It's time to spend a little bit of time on draft eligible kickers. So if you take a look at the Seahawks right now, we kind of know this season's not going to be that good. We kind of know it's a rebuilding year. We know it's a uh, reset the uh, re rack em kind of year. Whatever Pete Carroll may say, whatever he's trying to spin right now, I think we all understand that when you're going into the season with Geno Smith and Drew Locke as your starting quarterbacks, we're battling for the starting quarterback job. When you need to completely blow up the offensive line and when you're switching to a new defensive scheme, you are going through a little bit of a rebuild. So, with that in mind, I think the need to switch at kicker becomes even more obvious. Right now, we got Jason Myers in the last year of a big money deal for a kicker. We save four million bucks if we cut him. And look, if we were trying to win this year, like if we kept Wilson, if we spent big in free agency, if we were doing all these things to try to make us have a really good year in 2022, try to go deep in the playoffs, I wouldn't agree with keeping Myers, but I would understand it because you don't want to take a chance on a kicker who you've never had before and could be a complete dud. You want to at least have a guy who's been good in the past for you. But now that we're blowing it up a little bit, now that we're going through this little bit of a rebuild and looking to the future... Can't do that anymore. Even if you bring back Jason Myers and he has a good year, so what? He's not going to win you five games and get you to the playoffs. That's not how this works. He's not going to do enough for it to make a real difference in the season. And then he's a free agent. You're probably not bringing him back anyway because at that point he might want even more money than he was already making. So you got to use this opportunity to go out and try to find a kicker who could be your guy for the next decade plus. Go find the next Justin Tucker. Find the next Adam Vinatieri. Find a guy who you can lean on for a long time so you don't have to worry about it anymore. So let's take a swing on a guy in this draft, be it in the actual draft or UDFA. If it works, great. If it doesn't work, then whatever, the season wasn't going to be good anyway. Let's try to get somebody else in the following year, maybe. So let's look at some guys. I only got three guys, to be perfectly honest. Um, it's hard to find scouting stuff on kickers. It's hard to find information on the top college kickers. There is some subjectivity here. But um, I think the most interesting guy for Seahawks fans would be Cameron Dicker from Texas, Longhorn. So... To recap, if we get Cameron Dicker, and by the way, ESPN thinks he's a late seventh round pick, CBS thinks he'll go undrafted, so it shouldn't be hard to get him, you will have Dicker from Texas and Dixon from Texas as your special team specialist. So that's pretty good, right? That's pretty strong. So that alone gives him a lot of appeal, and if you take a look at his performance over the last four years... He's missed four extra points out of like 210. So his extra point rate of of making is very good. Now granted, the extra point in the NFL is a little longer, but re reliable on extra points. The field goal kicking has been a little bit of an odyssey, but he has improved as the years have gone on. He's had a, most recently, a 13 of 15 season. And he's made some very long kicks in his uh, career. He's made a few kick, uh, four kicks over 50. I think his career long might be like 56 or something like that. So he's made the big ones. He's got a pretty good history of making them from 40 to 49. Not amazing or anything, but pretty strong. Um, Dicker, he punted in 2021 as well, by the way. So he was actually pulling double duty for the Longhorns. He was kicking and punting. So you have a little bit of flexibility in that regard. He's great on kickoffs as well. And I know that's not as important as it used to be in the NFL, but it does add some value to not have to worry about kick returns. He's got a big leg. Like I said, he did make a few very long field goals in his college career. 
He's also a good tackler, for whatever that's worth. Uh, if he does give up a kick return, he's willing to come up and make the tackle. And obviously, like I said, he made almost all of his extra points in his college career. And I understand that that's not the most important thing in the world when evaluating a future NFL kicker because the kicks are not from that close now. But nevertheless, it shows the ability to be consistent from very short range, which can translate into something good from NFL extra point range. The issues with Dicker are that his kicks are low sometimes. Uh, his kicks are sometimes blockable. He needs to get more arc on his kicks, especially the shorter ones. A decent chunk of his misses over the years have come because of blocks. And ultimately, he only had one year of making more than 80% of his field goals. Uh, 2021. Uh, he, he had some years where he was missing pretty frequently, honestly. So accuracy is something that he's going to have to work on, but the fundamentals are there for a good kicker. Okay, next up is Parker White, and I'm going to say it right now. I don't really have a lot to say about this guy. Uh, South Carolina kicker, a little bit bigger than Dixon was, six foot four, 207 pounds. He kicked for South Carolina for five years. So a lot of experience. Over that period of time, he only missed two extra points. Um, other than two pretty bad years, he was fine kicking field goals. And including, uh, by the way, 2021, he had his best year, 16 of 17, including making all three of his kicks from 40 yards or more out. But I don't really have a lot to say about this guy because I couldn't find a lot of information on him. Other than that, he is considered by many sources to be one of the best kickers in this draft. So I'm not too excited about this one. There's nothing here that really stands out to me other than the great reliability from short range. But when it came to the longer kicks, he didn't have a lot of experience. As you can see, he only kicked uh, 11 field goals over 50 yards in his career and only made two of them. So not much of a leg. And as for the medium range field goals, 40 to 49, he started making a lot of them after his rookie year when he didn't do well at all, 4 of 12. But um, there, there isn't a whole lot here to get excited about. This guy might be more of a Hauschka type where he's reliable from short range and intermediate range. But once you start getting into the longer kicks, he can't even bother trying it. But... Parker White would definitely be a consideration. Walter Football really likes him. They have him going in the 5th through the 7th round. Uh, he's somebody on my radar, but he's probably probably my least favorite of these three. And now we get to my favorite. This is probably the guy that is most interesting. This is probably the guy that is most likely to end up a Seahawk because the Seahawks actually visited his, I think it was Pro Day, so there is some traction on Cade York and Seattle having mutual interest. Or, well, I shouldn't say that. As a rookie, you don't really have mutual interest. You go where you get drafted. So he's been kicking for LSU for the last three years. Uh, the first year he missed four extra points, but he was kicking so many. It's not even that bad percentage-wise. Last two years, he's been perfect on extra points. His field goal percentage has been pretty good for most of his career. Uh, the last... Two years in particular, he's only missed six total field goals. Um, he's reason been reasonably accurate from intermediate range, but the most interesting thing about Cade York is that from distance, he nails it. He's made a grand total of 15 kicks in the last three years of 50 or more yards out of 19. He's accurate and he has massive volume from 50 plus yards. And ESPN and CBS both see him as a priority UDFA. So the last two seasons, he's made about 85% of his field goals. So that's good, especially for college. Remember, the hash marks are a little wider. He's probably the best field goal kicker in the nation from long distance. You will not find very many other field goal kickers that are even attempting this many long range kicks, much less making almost all of them. And he gets good lift on the ball, so his, his kicks are hard to block. You're not going to block a Cade York kick easily. So if you can get this guy as a top-level UDFA, bring him in to compete with Myers or take Myers' job, that to me is, it's telling me that as an organization, you are going for it. You are trying to find the next great kicker, 
and you are trying to do something that takes care of this issue for us for years. Now, what I can say about Cade York in the negative would be that he didn't do kickoffs at LSU. Now, that doesn't mean he can't do it at L in the NFL. That doesn't mean you have to have a kickoff specialist. But for whatever it's worth, he didn't do kickoffs at LSU. He doesn't do a whole lot with onside kicks. His onside kicks are bad. I don't know how much that matters in the modern NFL where they've made onside kicks really hard to recover anyway. But uh, Dicker actually was good at um, kick at onside kicks, one thing that I uh, um, did not mention above, but he is actually considered to be pretty good on, on the onside kicks. And sometimes he pulls his kicks a little to the left. So that's probably something he can work on as time goes by, but Cade York would probably be my favorite of these three options. There are some other guys in this draft who may be of appeal to the Seahawks, but I want to get somebody young. I want to take a shot on somebody new. I want to take a shot on a kicker who has a chance to be great instead of keeping a guy who was great one time in his career, wasn't great last year, wasn't great three years ago, or, well, excuse me, yeah, yeah, three years ago, and at the end of the day, because of his age and because of his contract situation, probably won't be here by the time we're good again anyway, so... Those are my three guys. Let me know if you like anybody. Let me know who you like of this list. But these are the top three kickers in this rookie class as near as I can tell. All right. So I will see you guys later. There's going to be another video later today. More draft stuff. Um, tomorrow and the next day, we're going to go over some stragglers. Guys that I missed on the first pass. So we've got a few more things to grind through here. But we are almost at the end. So I'll see you guys later. Go Hawks. Let me know what you think.